Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about sketching cute anime style characters in Clips to the Pain presented by Belinda Liu. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to the time constraints, not all the questions will be answered. This webinar will be recorded, and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, and Belinda Liu. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have ever heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your only one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, we encourage you to tag us in your Instagram stories as hashtag webinar, at Belindro, at Graphicsly, at Wacom, at Clip Studio Official. We'll be sharing your stories if you tag us. Belinda Liu, also known as Belindro, is a coffee-addicted freelance artist based in Los Angeles who fell in love with drawing from playing lots of JRPGs and watching anime. For the past 20 years, she has spent her free time sketching silly and cute things that are inspired by music, fashion, and everyday life. She also streams her process every week on Twitch. So with that, I will leave you with Belinda and her presentation, Sketching Cute Anime Style Characters in Clips of Pain. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mario, for that kind introduction. Uh, I will begin to show my screen now. Okay, and let me know if you can see my presentation. Yes, all working perfectly. Okay, wonderful. So, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are, all, wherever you are in the world. And thanks to everyone who came to stop by and watch this webinar. And also special thanks to Graphicsly for this incredible opportunity to host this panel for everyone. Um, my name is Belinda, and for the next hour, I will be teaching you how to sketch cute anime characters in Clip Studio Paint. Now, before we begin, you might ask, what makes something cute anyway? And I would say it's really up to you. Um, for me personally, it involves proportions with like big eyes and big heads, and the subject is usually cheerful, innocent, naive, lovable, sweet. So things that make you feel fuzzy inside. Uh, so I want to take a couple of minutes to briefly talk about myself. Uh, as I said, my name is Belinda, and my online alias is Belindra. So pretty easy to remember. And um, I kind of treat the internet as my open diary. So you can find a lot of my works and sketches everywhere, but mainly on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, also under the name Belindra. And I also stream my art process twice a week, every week, every Tuesday and Friday at um, 8 p.m. Pacific time, all the way till whenever I feel like stopping, which is usually like 11 or when the sun rises. <laughs> so I want to give you a little brief look into how I draw uh, and what I draw. And hopefully by hearing how my brain works, it makes sense to see why I draw what I do. Um, for this first slide, you may see that this is the same character over and over, and you're correct because this is my mascot and representative representative online, Belindra. Like, this is the actual Belindra. <laughs> so she's been with me since I started drawing uh, as very, very, very young, and I've kind of taken it as a personal project to have her grow alongside with me. So, you know, when I play a cool video game and I'm like, wow, this world is amazing. I wonder how Belindra would act if she were in this world. What would she be wearing? These kinds of questions are always running through my head. So uh, an example here is on the upper right, you can see that she's in an idol outfit. And that's because I'm really into idols right now. So I was like, oh, how would she look like if she were an idol? And what she, which would she be wearing? 
the image to the left of that is an image I drew for her birthday. It's like a cute party dress and it's like, oh, I'm sitting on a, a giant cake and I'm wearing an adorable party dress. So let's celebrate together. Um, the rest of these images are just her in her everyday normal outfit. And uh, sometimes you can even see me peeking in and out of these drawings with her. Um, so for some non balloon draw related works, these are miscellaneous uh, drawings that I do for commissions or for convention posters, uh, sometimes gifts for friends, or sometimes I feel like the situation just calls for a little more love and elbow grease. But in essence, these are all basically just still sketches and they've just been refined more and more through many, many hours. I would say on average, these drawings take roughly like six to 12 hours, and um, if not even longer, honestly, but uh, you, you kind of just go in, you keep adding more detail, you keep adding more color, you keep adding more shadows and rendering it nicer and nicer and nicer, and it becomes polished like this. But today we are gonna be talking about sketching. And honestly, sketching is my favorite part about drawing. Um, I'm not really good with words personally, so I find that drawing and doodling is really a better way for me to self-express uh, how I'm feeling. Uh, as I come across life, I watch a, a cool movie cutscene that touches me. I, I feel like, oh, this is something that I have to capture in, in a drawing. I have to remember this moment. And sometimes I want to share that feeling with friends. Sometimes I'll just see a cool outfit Sometimes I'll hear a beautiful line in a song. And these are things that just like make me want to drop everything and remember that moment. And that's when I pick up the pencil and I start doodling. So these are kind of like my raw emotions laid out in an image, just in cute girl form. <laughs> Uh, something else that's kind of cool about me I wanted to just share with everyone is that my love for anime illustrations has somehow found its way onto vehicles. Uh, these are called Itashas, and they're basically anime characters that are printed out on large scale and uh, wrapped on the side of cars. And the way that I draw is I like to include a lot of dynamic movement and uh, a lot of flowy bits and make it look really cool. So I think it really complements the cars as they're flying down a freeway. <laughs> uh, people like to ask me who my art heroes are. And honestly, there's so many, I can't list them all. But here is a small snapshot of uh, my art heroes that paved that journey for me growing up uh, until present day. Um, all of these illustrators are industry professionals and uh, some of them in, are working in manga, some of them are working in anime, some of them are just freelance illustrators. But a lot of these works you can just find online. They just make it free for everyone to access. So there's a lot of study material out there and I have their Twitter handles um, in parentheses next to the, the artist's name if you can find their works on Twitter. Um, so what draws me to these illustrations is that they are very dynamic, they're very flowy, they're very colorful, they almost tell a story or they kind of represent a movie still, like kind of like if you had a friend that turned around suddenly, uh, like there's a, there's a movement in their hair and in their clothes when they, when they turn back and look at you. And um, you know, it's, it's almost as if you're taking a snapshot of that moment in time. So that's kind of my goal is I wanna capture these movie stills almost as, a, as an image. And I really look up to these illustrators um, for that reason. And um, special shout out to one illustrator that's not on this list. It's my older sister. She's actually the one that got me wanting to draw in the first place. Um, she doesn't draw anymore, but those memories of us growing up together and um, imagining different scenarios uh, just remains in my heart. Uh, I also wanna go over some tools that I use. Obviously, we're here to celebrate Clip Studio Paint, so I uh, I use Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I use specifically the EX version 2.0, and I've been using this since 2019 because I was studying a lot of illustrators from overseas, and I saw that they were using Clip Studio Paint, and I was like, "What are they using this? What what is this?" So I started looking it up, and I kept seeing keywords like, "This is the industry standard software for illustrators," and I was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." So I kind of looked into it and 
uh, it wasn't until I found the asset store that I was like, wow, there are so many resources that are provided for free or at a very low cost that I could just experiment with. Like my favorite illustrator sometimes just make a brush and I'm just like, wow, I can just use the same brush as them. I think that's incredible. Um, in terms of hardware, I use a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 and it has a touch screen capability, but I'm kind of old school. So I bought the express key remote to go with it. And what you do is you map like specific shortcut keys to the buttons and uh, it allows me to draw really, really quickly because I don't have to struggle with reaching for my keyboard and pressing the correct button. Um, but no matter what tool you use, I highly recommend you get an ergonomic stand for your tablets. Uh, the goal is to have your tablet kind of almost vertical facing towards you. And this prevents you from slumping over your desk and becoming a shrimp. <laughs> and you can get really lost in drawing and you can spend hours and hours and hours of drawing and suddenly you're sitting up and you're like, oh, my back really hurts. So make sure you can minimize that back pain by using an ergonomic stand and like keep it up at eye level and, you know, it's it's a little odd at first, but you'll get used to it. So just, uh, I briefly mentioned the remote. So this is just how I actually set my keys on the remote. Uh, but for you guys, I just wanted you to know that you can set your own shortcut keys in Clip Studio Paint. All you have to do is go to file and then on towards the bottom, there's a shortcut settings button and you can map any key on your keyboard to uh, a tool in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so for me, just to go over this very briefly, uh, this touch ring on the top allows me to change my brush size. So I can go bigger, smaller. And then I have a button that shows you, like that takes you to a specific layer. And I'll show you that later. Uh, eraser, undo, pencil, reset rotation, because I spin my canvas, canvas around all the time. And then dragging canvas uh, as well to navigate. And then occasionally I'll use the transform key uh, when I, when I want to, you know, move something around or shrink something. So my drawing process is broken into four general steps and they're pretty big steps. So this is a kind of a overall view. Um, the first step is brainstorming. So what do you want to draw and why do you want to draw it? That's kind of like, what is that spark that ignites you to want to draw whatever it is? Um, the second step is to design a character that complements that reason for what you want to draw. Do you want to share something cute? Do you want to share something fun, you want to share something sad. Um, all these things can be reflected in your character design, the character's pose and body language and the environment that they're in. Um, the third step is to actually do the sketch. And that's where you throw in construction lines, which is the light blue image. Um, you have the preliminary sketch, which is kind of the meat and bones and then color blocking, which helps you separate out the shapes of the image. And then lastly, just a big post-processing step, which is cleaning up and rendering in depth. So for the brainstorming step, uh, these are questions you wanna ask yourself when you're brainstorming. Uh, what do you like to draw? What inspires you? What stories do you wanna tell people? Uh, what memory are you capturing? And how do you wanna make your audience feel? These are just really, really broad questions that you can ask yourself, but just keep an open mind as you're living your life and like just absorb as much information as you can from your surroundings. Sometimes you're just like sitting on the bus and you're just, you just see someone across the way and they're wearing a really cute outfit and you're like, wow, I'm going to remember that. These are the things that like really make you want to draw. That's where the passion comes from. Uh, so I have two examples. On the left, there's some choreography from a K-pop song uh, that's like acting like a cat. So I kind of took that like paw next to the face um, pose <laughs> and then I drew that image uh, you know that you see to the right of it. The other image is based off of a song and it talks about things like sparking from a flame and it's a very upbeat tempo but I wanted to draw something different where it was like you're um, like maybe it's after the photo shoot and you want to rest in in the same like set but you know, there's still sparks, but it's a different kind of sparks. So I think that's kind of a cool collaboration uh, with your imagination. For the designing aspect, this is also a really, really fun part. Like really, really play with a lot of ideas to support that main brainstorming uh, inspiration. 
think about like the outfits of your character, the setting that they're in, the body language of the character, other things like the, the what color scheme do you want to do? What what outfit would this character wear? Even if you're dealing with fan art and the character already exists, um, like their design exists, just have fun with your personal interpretation of that character. Like imagine them in different scenarios that maybe aren't available. And um, something I like to do uh, personally is imagine characters as either on stage or off stage. Like they're playing their character with for like very promotional um, poses. And then if you want to do something uh, more casual and relatable, it's like, oh, offset, you know, you're getting a water bottle, you're celebrating an anniversary for the game's release or, or something like that. I like to just think about how the character would act if they weren't on camera. And speaking of cameras, you want to imagine yourself as a, a photographer and you're taking a snapshot of a single moment. So even on like a photo shoot, you would have a big fan that would be blowing a lot of things in the air. So you'll have like your hair floating around, your clothes floating around, stuff like that. It would add momentum and energy to your drawing. And make sure you capture your character's personality and that it, the body language makes sense. So a shy and reserved person would be more like holding on to themselves while an extroverted outgoing person would be more open and wide. And, you know, these subtle movements, like, like any subtle movements can really make a big difference and communicate a lot in that character's personality. Okay, so for the last two steps, we have to move into Clip Studio Paint. But before we do that, I want to show you something else before we get to the actual drawing. So I wanted to go through another drawing just very, very briefly, I'll give you another example to work off of. And uh, this is from beginning to end. So I have my original character, Blindra, here, and I was thinking, oh, I want to draw her as an idol. So we have uh, these idol outfits to uh, kind of inspire myself. And I'm thinking like, oh, she's on a stage and she's uh, surrounded by uh, loving fans with lots of glow sticks. So I drew this pose here and I was thinking, I'm imagining her on stage. I'm imagining her like dancing or jumping around and she's outstretching her hand out to you. Like, come join me, come join me in this fun. Come join my my fans and let's all let's all have a good time. So that's what this pose is supposed to communicate. For the sketching process, this is just kind of fleshing out the details and, you know, putting the eyes where they're supposed to go and, you know, figuring out the actual um, details of her outfit. Uh, and then I do the color blocking stage, which just solidifies those items. Like this is actually where the hair goes kind of thing. Very, very easy. For the post processing, um, it's basically just cleanup. So I just cleaned up the line, work, line art a little bit more. Um, and then I filled in those colors neatly. And then it's a little one to skip a few, but um, <laughs> you just you just keep poking at it until it becomes this, basically. You just, and I use the same tool over and over. It's just a lasso tool and an airbrush. So you just do that over and over and then eventually it becomes this. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. <laughs> um, we're gonna be focusing more on this area because I think this area is more fun anyway. Um, this is just elbow grease and work. <laughs> this is where you actually get to dream and imagine. So let's let's start our drawing demo, shall we? Um, I'm going to go to File and I'm going to make a new canvas here. And by default, my um, my canvas is set at 11 by 17 inches right here. You can see in units, and the resolution is set as 350 DPI. And this is just a fail safe for me because. Anything that's below 300 DPI is normally reserved for web, but I print out a lot of my work, so I want to keep it at least 300 or 350. And no matter what size you choose to make your drawing at, please just do your future self a favor and set it to 300 or 350 DPI, because maybe down the line, 10 years, you want to make an art book, you want to compile all your illustrations and print it out, like your future, your, your future self will thank you, because I've made that mistake in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and make our blank canvas. It's a little intimidating, but I think we can tackle this um, the right way. Uh, so in thinking about things that I wanted to draw for this demo, I was like, oh, well, it's springtime. It's, uh, it, people are going out, people are seeing their friends, people are um, hanging out and getting coffee and stuff like that. So I think about how I personally uh, would hang out with my friends and I'm like, oh, I would do a sketch jam. So 
I'm going to draw a girl. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining right now a girl that's at a cafe. She's sitting in a chair. She's holding her sketchbook. She's been waiting for you and she's excited to see you um, showing up. Uh, I'm going to treat her like a little bit opposite of myself, which is very elegant, very feminine, very like graceful and prim and proper. And um, I'm going to just start mapping down these construction lines uh, to like kind of captured that energy at that moment and it's going to be like pretty loosey-goosey here but the the thing is you just want to start you just want to remember how you're feeling at that moment or how you want your audience to feel at that moment and you're like okay i just want to make sure that like this pose kind of makes sense and that it communicates that uh, idea from uh from a distance so his this is kind of like the skeleton of your drawing i guess for lack of a better term and don't worry, again, it doesn't have to be super neat and it doesn't have to be super detailed or amazing. You're just creating a map for yourself. This is something that you can refer back to and just be like, oh, okay, I remember. This is initially what I wanted people to feel when they looked at my drawing. So there's a there's a chair. And then I'm gonna do something like, uh, let's give her like really long, beautiful hair and uh let's have it drape over this chair which doesn't really make sense but it's it's cool it's interesting so that's fine uh in terms of what she'll wear when i think of like elegance and, and feminine uh energy i think of like a loose billowy top i think of like i'm really into high-waisted skirts so let's just give her a high-waisted skirt and some cute pleats with her skirt all right so that looks pretty good to me and then i'm gonna give her like a hairband and a pencil in her hair because that's cute, right? Um, I'm gonna kind of do some adjustments just real quick. I'm eyeballing it to see, does this make sense? Does pose, is, is the pose relatable? Does it look comfortable? Does it fit with the narrative that I wanna create? So that looks pretty good to me. I think we can move on to the next step, which is um, the preliminary sketch. Now, before I do that, I wanna show a couple of cool more tips with Clip Studio Paint. Uh, for one, you can go to window, you can go to canvas, you can go to new window, and you can create a duplicate canvas of your image, right? It's just basically the same thing. But there's a cool thing about this canvas here, and it's that it's it's kind of a mirror of your drawing. So I'm going to pin this to the left. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be primarily drawing on the right. And I'll show you an example. I'm going to change my brush to like red, for example, and I'm just going to draw a big old red line across the screen. And you'll see that it's reflected on the left side. So the reason I do this is because I like to keep a zoomed out image uh, of my drawing so I can always reference it and see how it looks from a distance, like checking silhouettes and you know seeing if the shapes translate correctly. And in the mean, on the right side, I can like zoom in and start working on the finer details. Um, I forgot to mention this real quick, but uh, don't worry, we didn't miss out on much. I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to time lapse and record time lapse. And this essentially will record the brush strokes of your image. Uh, and then at the very end, you get to see a really cool like compilation of your image of your of your drawing, like from beginning to finish. And you can extract your um, time lapse at any time. So you can like do different phases of it. Uh, I'll give you a brief uh, look at one of the uh, one of the time lapses that I did for the blend draw drawing. And you can export it in like different ways, like 60 seconds, 30 seconds, I think even 15 seconds or the full thing. So this was just me struggling with the image for a little bit. I was deciding between two poses. I decided to go with the one on the right. Oh, I guess I experimented with a couple more poses, but yeah, this is basically recording your process. And so just kind of like that in a nutshell. Um, so. With that being said, uh, we can start do, we can start moving on to the actual preliminary sketch. So I'm going to uh, on the layer of my sketch, I'm going to change the layer color to blue. This is a really cool tool too because it helps me prevent myself from getting confused. Like you're drawing something over something, so I don't want it to be too distracting from what I'm actually doing. Uh, so that's why I make it blue. It's to prevent myself from being distracted. But at the same time, it serves as a guideline that's just there for you um, so that you can be like, oh yeah, this is kind of where I wanted my head to be. And forgive me, um, the, the drawings are a little motor memory at this point because I've drawn so many cute girls over so many years, but I like to work inside out. So I always start with the eyes and then I frame the entire image around the eyes. 
So I will go into like the hair, for example, after the eyes. Um, I'll also draw the head. And even though you have like an image in mind, I would say it's still kind of a fuzzy image. So there's still room to play. There's still like a little playground aspect of it. Like for example, um, with this hair, I didn't have to draw this kind of bangs. Maybe I wanted her forehead to show instead. Maybe I wanted her to have blunt cut bangs. Maybe I didn't want her to have bangs at all and they're tied up. These are like things that you can still experiment with. Just make sure that it ties in with your narrative because that's ultimately the thing that you're focusing on, right? You want to communicate those ideas. So in this step, you might see that it's still a little bit messy. And that's because I'm focusing more on, like you're adding the meat and potatoes to your drawing. But at this step, I'm more focusing on shapes and making sure that the shapes are translating correctly. Um, I'm not going in too much and like meticulously drawing like muscle groups or details and stuff like that. Um, here's an example I want to show you. Uh, if you were to draw like a butterfly, like you can draw the middle, you can draw the parts, you can draw the antennas, you can draw all the do 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 like the little decorations. But for me, I I could just symbolize it with this, and you can already tell that it's possibly a butterfly. Even if I did this, let's see if I did this. Does that look more like a butterfly? Like. That's the kind of shape language that you're going for. Um, so that's make sure that the shapes are communicating what that object is. So like, here's the cuff that's separated from the blouse, that stuff. Um, so I'm gonna just start drawing in here. And at the same time, you can reference your image on the left side. I can already see her head is kind of big <laughs> compared to the rest of her body, but I wouldn't have known that if you're just zooming in and focusing on the details. So making a mental note later to change her head and make it smaller. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that I'm kind of very, very often I'm, I'm doing a horizontal flip on the image. And that's because it serves multiple purposes for me. The first purpose is that it, um, it resets the image for me. And it's the equivalent of kind of walking away from your drawing for a little bit or just glancing away. And, um, it helps reset that image so you can look at your drawing objectively and be like, okay, where did I, like, did I forget something or is something like too big or too small or sideways or where it's, where it's not supposed to be? Um, the other option, the other reason I do it is, I don't know about you, but my drawings just tend to skew in one direction. So I think by doing a horizontal flip, it allows you to bring more balance to the image. Um, I noticed, I mean, I learned this the hard way because I used to do acrylic charms for conventions and I would notice that they look great from one direction, but they look horrible from the other direction. So I made it a, a mission in life to make sure my drawings are well balanced and I use the horizontal flip for that. Okay, so I'm just adding in, again, it's, it's still pretty simple. Uh, but I'm adding in shapes that would make up the chair. Um, and we, I mean, it, it communicates the idea that it's a chair, right? And I'm gonna see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start. I'm gonna make her head smaller a little bit. You might notice this in this stage, or you might notice it in the next stage, which is color blocking. Um, let me also add some light in her eyes, just so it's a little more humanizing and it's not just shapes. Mm, okay, that looks good. I think her head is a little skewed, so I'm gonna also grab this. I'm gonna transform. And here's a pro tip that I've learned recently is that uh, for those of you that are struggling with horizontal flip, I like to keep my reference in one orientation and then my drawing in the other orientation. And the goal is to make your drawing look good from both directions. <laughs> so you just keep poking at it and then you're like, does that look good? That looks a lot. That looks a little better to me. Okay. And you can see I'm being pretty loose with my lines. Oops. Um, so... It's okay because this is just a sketch and you can develop it later with other preliminary sketches oops to further define your um, your drawing okay so that looks good to me 
I'm going to zoom out to see how she looks in reference to the entire canvas. You see, maybe she's like kind of to the side a little bit. So let's move her to the center. And then now that I'm good with that, oh, her head is still kind of big, but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out later. Um, I'm going to lower the, I'm going to remove the uh, underlying sketch layer here. And then the way I do colors is um, I create a folder right here and I'm going to make a new layer per color. So for one layer, I'm going to do uh, her skin tone. So I have, I'm just roughly circling things that would be in skin tones. Um, something like this. And I'm going to just pick like a light peach color and fill tool that in. Same thing with her hair. It's long, it's graceful, it's feminine, it's flowy. These are like words that you want to say to yourself. And with that being like, you know, cutesy and stuff, let's make it pink. Let's make her hair pink. And uh, reminds you of the springtime a little bit, right? And uh, going to do that. And so you'll see uh, that I'm blocking in these colors. And at the same time, you can see it being reflected on the left side of my screen. Um, the reason I like to do this again is so you can spot like proportional errors. Like right now, to me, the head does look pretty big. So I'm going to go back and fix that. But everything else, let's see. It's just, let's just, let's just fill in all of these details first. Here, here's her eyes and her iris. And then her mouth. Oh, I guess her mouth is closed. Um, and then maybe her socks. I'll do like a light gray. For the, oh, you know what I forgot? Is I forgot to draw her actual shoes. <laughs> so let's draw that in. For the colors that I'm choosing, uh, honestly, I like to just stick with similar colors. So like pink and orange are kind of close to each other on the color wheel. So that's what I do instinctually. <clears throat> Which is not a bad thing, but yeah, I do want to explore colors one day. <laughs> um, and then you may notice me clicking around a lot. Here's a, another pro tip for you. Say, for example, um, I want to I want to uh, make this uh, this pencil an orange color, same orange color as her chair. Uh, but I don't know where my orange layer is, right? There's so many layers at this point. So if I hold down control shift, you'll notice that my cursor changes to a plus sign. And by clicking on the layer, check out the bottom right here, it'll take me directly to that layer. So it's like a really easy way to find your layers quickly. And if you want to find like multiple layers, you can also highlight, like draw a box and everything within that box will be highlighted as well. So you can quickly find like what layer you're looking for. Um, I always like to go on the layer to color pick. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to just fill in this box right here, uh, here, and then I'll do, okay. So for the white, it's a little, it's a little different because we have a white background. So um, to prevent myself from being confused with the white in the background and the white in the foreground, I'm going to make it actually a drastically different color just so I can separate the objects. Uh, for example, the chair, let's also just make that white. Yeah, and then uh, her hair band too. Let's also make that white. Okay, just fill that in. Oh wait, sorry. So drast drastically different color. I'm gonna pick like green, for example, and this will help you see, like, did I miss any spots? Like here, I missed a kind of a spot. Um, yeah, it's it doesn't have to be perfect again, but looking to the left, you wanna see like the ratios of the colors that you have. Um, for the ribbon down here, I'm gonna just match her skirt color. There's that. And then same for the hardware here, I'll just make it <clears throat> the same orange color for simplicity's sake. But yeah, don't rest on that control shift tip. <laughs> oh, so uh, let's grab that color. There you go. Okay, everything looks great here. I'm going to, uh, oh, I forgot to color her choker here. Let's, did you know there was a choker there? <laughs> So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna change her the, all the green on this layer to white now that I know that it's okay. So you can get a little preview of the layers down here. 
So I can obviously see this is the green one. Uh, I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to tonal correction, hue, satur saturation, luminosity, and I'm just going to bump that luminosity all the way up to white. So in essence, this is kind of our sketch already. Um, this is round one. What I would probably do after this is um, like here, here's where I would start making like post correction. So like her head, I can see is kind of skewed. So I'm going to try to fix that. That's good. Um, I'm also going to shrink her head, like I kept saying. So let's finally do that. And looking at this uh, drawing on the right, on the left side for reference, just to see how the drawing looks overall. That looks a lot better. Actually, it might be a little too small. Let's make it just a little bigger. Yeah, because cute things have big heads, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so that looks great. I think we have a, a bit more time right now, so I can go into some light rendering. It's not exactly post-rendering yet, but I like to also lay down the highlights and the shadows so that I can get a better vision of what the image is supposed to look like at the end. So I'm going to um, put all the, all the layers are now input into one folder, and I'm going to clip a layer outside of it to this folder. So for those of you that don't know what clipping is, um, it basically locks the transparency to anything that's being clipped to. So I can't draw outside of anything that you know is not already there. Uh, if you unclip it, you can you can see you know how it actually looks. So let's get rid of that. And um, I'm gonna quickly block in some shadows and some highlights. Uh, for reference, I'm gonna just you know place my sun here. And uh, here's a little unorthodox way of doing it. This is kind of self-taught. I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught, so a lot of these things I'm still learning. But I take the lasso tool, and I basically think of my image in three dimensions. And I'm like, OK, where would things start turning away from the light if there were a light source? And this is really just based off of feeling and intuition at this point. Uh, you can also study a lot of images. and you know, the longer you hang around something, the longer you'll get to know it better. Uh, for example, I've been drawing a lot of pleated skirts, so I kind of know how pleated skirts work and how the light falls on them, but you just block in anything that you think is a shadow. And don't be too, like, harsh on yourself. I don't think you should really strive for perfection at this point. It's more of still initially trying to capture that feeling and that emotion in the drawing. This just helps bring it to another dimension just provides some depth for your image. So again, just very loosely blocking in some shadows where I think shadows would go. Okay. So I'm gonna grab like a maybe an orangey brush and an airbrush or orangey color and an airbrush. And I'm just gonna lightly brush this in here. So it creates kind of like a warm shadow for her. I see her shoulders too high here, so I'm gonna. <laughs> sorry, there's a lot of like little corrections that you notice as you go along. So that looks good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna fix the line art. I know it's moving like really, really fast. Normally, I don't move this fast, but in the interest of time, I wanted to show you a full image. So I would most likely pass through this multiple times and take my time with it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with uh, an overlay layer. I'm going to clip it to the folder below, and I'm going to just roughly generate where the highlights would go. Where, What is facing your light source is a better way to ask that question. And again, I'm not striving for accuracy. Honestly, I'm in this, I'm in the camp where like, even if you don't know, you know, where things are supposed to go, I think just having just having the the like having fun with your image is is really important and if you're anything like me um eventually this won't be satisfactory anymore like just kind of messing around and you actually will seek out the fundamentals and uh the knowledge that you need to strengthen your drawings even more okay lastly i'm going to start i'm going to make a, a another layer here I'm going to change it to glow dodge and I'm also going to clip it 
And this is where you pop in those like really iconic anime hair shines. I'm just drawing like fun shapes maybe. And then plotting down areas that um, I want to pop, like things, this, this, this is just like a really, really fun step for me. Just throw in things that I want to accentuate. So something like that. I'm going to pick like a yellowy color and just brush that in. Okay. So now that I have that done, I'm going to take a step back. Let's maybe get rid of that sun. Let's throw in a simple background for her. I'm going to just draw quote unquote like windows maybe. So some blue boxes, keep it a little abstract. And then uh, I forgot to uh, shade her skin. I shade skin differently, independently of everything else. I just think it needs a little more focus. So again, I made a layer on top of my skin layer specifically, and we are just going to map out smaller details of where the skin should be shaded. And um, here under her skirt, and I'm going to pick an orangey color and just brush that in as well. And then lastly, to add some color to her face, like some blood in her face, I guess, I'm gonna just lightly add in a blush here. Oops, that might be too much blush. She's too embarrassed to see you. Um, okay, cool. So that looks good. Uh, I'm gonna do some little poking here, just refine some details. Uh, here is like, I have, I'm gonna make her lashes fuller just to give her a little more Feminine energy, some long eyelashes to flutter at you. <laughs> and maybe at this point, like, I'm hoping that you're getting the vibe of, like, this character is maybe saying, hey, what do you want to draw today? Or what did you draw? Or, oh, I'm glad you finally made it. And I've, I've been doodling while I've been waiting. And you can kind of have this internal dialogue with her. It's, it's pretty fun. Basically, you're adding a personality to your character. So I'm just defining some things and just watching out on the left to make sure that the drawing makes sense. I see that the top of her head is kind of big, so let's just lower it a little bit. That looks great. Cool. All right. So that's essentially your sketch. Um, let's see. Let's do one last check here, I think. The pose is strong. She's cute. She's shy. She's huddling her, her sketchbook. She's waiting to hang out with you. She's wearing a cute outfit um, that matches her personality, something that you can see this personality type wearing. Um, she's got her feet like very dainty, and her toes are together, and her legs are propped up. It's, it's very cute. Um, her sketchbook is it allow it adds some like playfulness to the drawing where she's like resting a lot of her body weight um, in her hips and on her on her sketchbook here creates almost like a focal point a little bit yeah so that's basically the drawing here um, I have a couple of more images I want to show you uh, let me find my let me find my hair layer. Okay, so uh, I'm going to also lower her shoulder a little bit here. I'm just noticing little things here and there that I want to correct. Um, so basically from, from this point, you're going to um, make any adjustments like I just did. You're going to shove everything into another folder, and then you're going to lower the opacity of this folder. And you can start doing another sketch over this. It basically helps a lot because you have a really strong foundation set on the bottom. There, there's no longer any ambiguity because the color blocking kind of forced you to make decisions on what things actually are. It's not just lines anymore, it's actual things that you're drawing. Um, like you're drawing a chunk of hair, you're drawing a sleeve, you're drawing a, a pencil. And this is where you can start adding in like details. Like here's where I'm gonna draw like the little details. And then after this, you'll go over it with more cleaner line art um but yeah this should pretty closely um reference the image below it and the reason why a lot of illustrators feel that their sketch to line art layer has such a big disconnect i think often is because there's too much confusion and it's not clear what you're actually lining on the bottom so by color blocking it 
it really helps reduce that stress of figuring out things as you go. This is just me on autopilot at this point. So yeah, if I hide my layers below, it looks great. Yeah, less sketchy, it's just more refined. So before I get too caught up into that, I'm gonna uh, take a couple of seconds to show you some other demos I did uh, in the same family of this uh, drawing. So two more girls that you know are hanging out with you on the weekend. They have different personality types. So this one in the middle is more like effervescent, bubbly, maybe more youthful. She's running towards you. She's excited to see you. Um, the one on the right is more shy, reserved. You can see her arms are behind her back. She's shyly crossing her legs behind her, but she feels comfortable enough with you to like give you a cute little wink. So hopefully like that translates in the body language. So I'll show you what these sketches actually look like when I develop them. So something like this, hopefully they kind of fall in that same family and they make you feel uh, different kinds of feelings towards these girls, but at the same time, they're all very cute. <laughs> so that's the important part. Um, so to, to kind of uh, conclude on my presentation here, I have some advice that I want to uh, leave you with uh, before we go into the Q&A section. So um, really be proud of your creations. This is the number one thing that I, I hope artists take away from this. Um, to be able to draw, it's, it's such a personal experience. Like it's really a beautiful thing where you're looking deep into your heart and your subconscious and you're putting that onto paper or a tablet pen or whatever. Um, it's a, honestly a really good way to express yourself and it provides a great outlet for when you have a buildup of emotions. I think people do this similarly with like cooking and dancing and, and all these other fine arts, but um, drawing is just the way that I choose to express myself. So be proud of the fact that you have the talent or the skills to do that. Um, the next tip is never to give up. And as you're drawing, you're gonna come across plateaus of growth. You're gonna get really, really good. You're gonna learn something neat. You're gonna wanna implement that. And you're like, wow, this is great. But then after a point, you're gonna notice that like things are plateauing and they're, you're not really going anywhere. So that's a good signal to start looking for new knowledge. Um, an example, a personal example of mine is I always drew characters from the same angle. And uh, it wasn't until I studied like different angles, like maybe a little anatomy, maybe a little bit of perspective, just to create more interest in my work. And personally, I have so many images that I still want to draw. I just don't have that technical skill to do so. So I'm still in that same same struggle with you guys to figure out how to draw things uh, as I see them in my mind's eye. Um, which leads me to my next step, which is as much as you tire of hearing it, the fundamentals really are important. I don't think they're necessary when you're a starting artist, but when you get to my point and you're comfortable with drawing, uh, the fundamentals really plus your drawings. They really help bring them to a three, like three-dimensional and like, so that people can easily um, see your drawings and relate to them better. Uh, things like color theory can really go a long way or drawing boxes and like learning planes and learning um, perspective and all these all these important things. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there, so just keep an eye out for them. And the last thing is take advantage of that asset store. <laughs> I cannot stress how amazing this thing is. Like I have it opened here. Uh, there's so many great assets. Like look, these are free. It's just brushes. Amazing. Uh, there's like 3D models. There's color map gradients. It really is an incredible part of Clip Studio Paint. <laughs> I came from a program with like almost no tools, so this is a game changer. Uh, to bring up the 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 store, all you have to do is click this little button up here, and then there's a button on the left side that says Clip Studio Assets. And then lastly, um, some final words of advice is support the artists in your community. Um, like it's such a collaborative effort to be an artist. You're always being inspired by others around you and not just illustrators but just musicians and dancers and there's so many people out there to just support and and really praise them and and you know if you want to support me you can find my work below great segue belinda oh uh, instagram twitter and again if you want to speak with me directly you can always find me on twitch twice a week tuesdays and fridays at 8 p.m pacific time and if there's anything you want to take from this at the very end of the day is just draw what makes you happy because you don't even have to share the drawings with people 
just it's great outlet to just get your emotions out and it's really fun to look back it's almost like a time capsule you can see your old drawings and i know it's cringy but you can be like wow i remember i really really loved this anime or i really really loved like this moment that happened to me so i hope i hope you guys all take this in in your heart and don't worry so much about the accuracy of your drawings just really plot something down and fix it over you know a few hours like <laughs> just getting the idea down is the fun part um yeah, so that kind of concludes my presentation. I hope it was inspiring to you. I hope it makes you want to draw something. I would love to see the drawings that you do um, that maybe this webinar has inspired you to do. But I think I'm ready for some questions, Mario. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Belinda, for this wonderful and incredible presentation. And people loved it. Uh, so we ask from where, uh, of the, for where, which part of the world were you watching this webinar? Uh, so, for example, Sarah from Iran, Yumi from Singapore, Mai from US, Angelo from Netherlands, Frank from Germany, Betul from Kuwait, Tuija from Finland, Graciela from Brazil, oh my Philippines, gosh. Aubrey, Papa Paul, Salvador, Paola, UK, Jordan, Slovakia, Gabriela, uh, Calgary, RM. Well, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Um, so that's, let's that's incredible. <laughs> let's go with some questions. There are a lot of questions. So, for example, this one from Arthur. Do you always do multiple sketches? Then I often have trouble staying motivated when the first sketch keeps needing tricks and lines and never seem to feel right. Um, so yeah, I do. Like this, this drawing was rehearsed to be fully transparent. Um, but it took me a while to get to this point, and to, there's two ways to go about it. If there's something that you really, really, really want to communicate and you're struggling with your sketch, maybe you can think of a different way to communicate it. Um, or maybe you, like, if you're anything like me, uh, once the feeling's gone, you just leave the drawing alone and you just maybe keep it as a distant memory. So it's not always the first shot that you get this drawing done but there are lots of tweaks that you might have to do to the drawing. Uh, if it's getting to a point where it's frustrating, maybe take a break, uh, walk away, or try something else. So keep at it. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of questions about where did you uh, learn about anatomy, or for example, this one from Anita Luo, uh, which resources do you use to learn more fundamentals? Can you explain a bit? Yeah, um, so again, this is really self-taught. So a lot of this is just exposing myself to a lot of different illustrations online. Um, I wouldn't say my anatomy is perfect. And in fact, some of the artists that I used to reference in the past for anatomy didn't have correct anatomy either. Uh, so I think I got really lucky in that I just ended up drawing anatomy in the way that I do, I still am very guilty of drawing like really long, really big heads. And sometimes my hips are too wide or log legs are too long. So it's more of like, after you have, you've built this visual library of um, like what a character should look like, it helps to like look at your drawings and be like, does my drawing look like that? So it, all in all, I would recommend that you look into like the illustrators that you really enjoy and see how your anatomy compares to them. Uh, in terms of fundamentals and where you can learn more, I cannot sing praises enough for this YouTuber named Marco Bucci. He is like, I guess he's a, he, he also teaches illustration, but he breaks down concepts in such a simple and easy to understand way and they're really entertaining. So he goes into like colors. I've been learning a lot of colors from him. And um, yeah, he talks about like character design and, and all these things. So I highly recommend Marco Bucci. And if not him, uh, just look up your favorite illustrators and study their process. I think that's a really great advice. And also there are a lot of questions about your shortcuts. I mean, you use <laughs> a lot the Lasso tool. What are your favorite or most used shortcuts? Uh, also people ask about uh, this separated window, the navigation, et cetera. Can you also explain a little bit about it? Sure. Um, so my, my favorite tool is the pencil tool. <laughs> 
and uh, I just use this Sue cream pencil. You can get it on the asset store. It's free. Uh, it's it's a, like a textured brush. So you just uh, go in and you can see, oh, well, I don't have my tablet here. So you can see how there's like a kind of a grainy texture, which I really like. It gives a more organic feeling to my drawings. Um, yeah, some of these tools I discover by accident or I watch a lot of like how to use Clip Studio paint like videos. So um, yeah, this tool is really helpful for just giving you an overview of your drawing at all times. And the lasso tool um, I learned because uh, I used to actually go in and like painstakingly like color, like, oh, here's the hair. So I'm going to start doing the shadows for the hair. But um, I noticed actually that that led me to not having cohesive shadows because like I would shade the hair this way, but then I would shade the skin like this way. So the shadows actually don't match up at all. I don't know if you can tell um, if my light source was here, like why is it here and why is it here? That doesn't make sense. So I did the lasso tool as a way to simplify like shadows and lights. And I just like, you know, oh, okay. Well, in general, if you were to color a sphere, like here's the part that would be like in shadow and then you just block that in with a with the airbrush tool kind of thing and there's this really great like toolbar down here that makes it really easy to access a lot of tools so here's the fill bucket i i use that sometimes right here's um here's like the erase like delete and then um other things like inverting the area so if i wanted to sketch outside of this shape you can do that as well so stuff like that, it, it all is a, a lot of experimentation, but yeah, look up like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of videos out there that really show you how to navigate uh, Clip Studio Paint. And if there's something that you specifically want to do as well, also look that up. Like I was teaching myself animation through Clip Studio Paint and I had no idea how to do it. So I was just like, how do I animate in Clip Studio Paint? And there's a, there's a lot of like tutorials out there. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's basic. I'm I'm pretty basic with my tools. It's just a pencil, airbrush, uh, eraser, and then there's a liquify tool which was introduced recently, but I don't know how to use it very well. So I heard that that one's a, a really good uh, crowd favorite too. Um, some one real quick tip is uh, I didn't get to talk about this because it's not really relevant, but I think it's kind of with the times. Is if you have a symmetry ruler, uh, you can draw something symmetrical and i've been uh because i've been working with vtubers i've been building vtubers uh, symmetry is pretty important so that's that's also a really great tool to uh, take in mind yeah so i i hope it inspires you to just dig around the the software really um one awesome. more oh sorry sorry <laughs> Uh, sorry. No, thank you so much. Uh, and people still sending greetings and thank you so much for this amazing webinar. People from Chile, like Valeria, uh, Josh from Japan, Philippines, Jasmine, Elizabeth, Illinois. I saw somebody from uh, Spain also as well. But another question uh, that uh, was repeated was about hands, that the fearful <laughs> topic about hands. Oh, uh, did you ever got difficulties with hands? Um, so my hands are pretty not great. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm the correct person to ask, but uh, I do want to stress the importance of looking up references. Uh, I believe Clip Studio has a, a tool where you can actually like record or use a webcam to track your hands and you can get a 3D model out of it. But honestly, for me, I just look at my own hands uh, and sometimes I end up with backwards hands as a result, but you know, that's fine. I also recommend looking up like photos. Uh, you can see like, this is how it would look in real life. So I have a lot of photos of cosplayers and uh, like, for example, you can study the hands they have here. And it's really just breaking it down into shapes. Like it's really just ovals, right? It's not really a hand per se. Um, another thing with uh, references, I just want to throw this out here. Referencing like anything, not just hands is so, it's such a great like thing that I've just recently learned. Uh, like from memory, I drew like my idea of what a bow is, but after looking up an actual bow, you can see like how, like especially these frills, you can see how it really changes when you have something to look at and be like, oh, that's how they're supposed to look. So I would apply this towards hands, towards clothes, towards anything, yeah, even poses. Mm -hmm. Another question from Carla. 
And you recommend to start selling merchandise with your own drawings, not fan art, but something more like original pieces or OC drawings? Um, so I, I got really lucky. I started drawing pretty early. Uh, so Belindra is, Belindra as my mascot is, I don't, I don't want to say she's like super recognizable, but some people know her like before they know who I am. Um, I would only recommend doing uh, original content if one, you really, really, really feel strongly about it. And two, like you have an established brand. It doesn't have to be both. It could just be one or the other. And uh, because people want to support me as an illustrator, they want to buy like blend draw merchandise. Um, but honestly, I feel like the easier way to go to get more viewers at first to build that brand is to draw fan art. And fan art is fun because you can put your personal interpretation towards like a character that people already recognize. So it's like, oh, you've seen this character always like this, but did you ever think of what if I threw her in a ballerina outfit? Or what if I drew her like, you know, in a cool tech wear, like post-apocalyptic world. It's like reimagining these characters. Um, puts, putting your own spin on existing characters is also kind of original in a way. But yeah, I, I would uh, recommend drawing for passion. And then once people get a hold of that passion, then you can create lots of original works and people will be able to relate to it easier because they know what you're what you're about. Mm -hmm. uh, before going to the next question, we want to thank everyone who will tag us on their Instagram stories with the hashtag webinar at Bellingraw, at Graphicsly, at Wacom and at Studio Official. Official will, we are sharing your stories, so thank you all of you. Um, another question from Arian. How do you find inspiration and how do you deal when you're not feeling inspired? Oh, this is fun because I'm a workaholic, so when you're feeling uh, burnt out or you're not feeling inspired, you can go out and play, you know, go out and go watch a movie, uh, listen to some cool songs, look at other artists' work. Um, here's something that I do for fun. A big inspiration for me is music videos uh, because music is a really big influence for me. So I went in and like took screenshots from Korean pop videos and like just their body language is so interesting and fun. And I'm like, oh, like this is what I was talking about where it's like a snapshot in time, right? Like I'm literally taking a screenshot of a music video. So to translate that movement into an illustration is like a really fun exercise and you have a template to kind of work off of. Um, the other thing is just like, maybe you just need to take a break. Um, sometimes you're just working too much. So taking a break can help refresh your memory and give you some uh, energy. Go, go eat a banana, go something, go take a break. Uh, but if you're really seeking out inspiration, uh, I always love to listen to music and, and the lyrics really speak to me sometimes, or just do some studies and build that, like build those strong foundations to work off of, go online, look at cute clothes, uh, or go on Twitter, Instagram, go look at your favorite artists, see what they're up to and be like, oh, I want to do that too, something like that. So just seek it, seek inspiration everywhere. Well, I think with those wise words, we can wrap up this webinar. And everybody loved it again. Uh, they are sending messages through the question panel. <laughs> so thank you so much, Belinda. Thank you all who join us live. Um, but before we go, we would just want to share one last bit of information. And uh, uh, yes, I also, sorry. I also just want to say real quick, like for someone that never leaves Los Angeles, it's incredible to see like people all over the world here. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Um, we couldn't read all of your questions, but we tried to make uh, the most repetitive ones uh, during this session. Uh, most of you ask us also if this webinar was going to be recorded. And yes, you can find it online on our YouTube channel, Clip Studio Paint channel, and also Graphicsly. So please subscribe to receive a notification once the video is available to watch. Also learn more about Clip Studio Paint in our site clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com and for more information about Belinda Liu don't forget to follow her on her socials as Belinda Instagram Twitter watch her, her live streaming on Twitch and also on her website belindraw.com so with that thank you so much Belinda for this amazing presentation I had so much fun so thank you for having me
Thank you so much, all of you. Stay tuned for our next webinars and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.